welcome to my video. I am Dr. Ghaffar Khyani, an associate professor in the field of electronics engineering. My this video is actually the continuation of my previous videos in which I explain what is energy saving glass, what is hard coat, what is soft coat, and how these two energy saving glasses differ from each other. In this video, I am explaining how to etch frequency selective surface on the coated side of the glass. The soft coat is basically metal oxide. The soft coat is the metal oxide. This is like a powder. So etching frequency selective surface either using laser beams or the milling machine is easier. However, when we have to etch a frequency selective surface on the hard coat energy saving glass, it's not that easy. So for example, I show you one of the energy saving glass with the hard coat. This glass will be showing you, you can see here, here is the coated side, this is the metal side. And we have etched cross FSS, cross dipole type FSS on this. And this was etched using a laser machine and the laser we put the highest strength on this one. However, when we put this glass under the test to see the frequency response, we got this conclusion that this is not etched. This is only scrubbed from the surface, but it was not properly etched, so there was no signal going through. And what is the reason for this? That when the hard coat is inserted or sputtered on the surface here, this surface is molten. It's a very high temperature. And then the silver or aluminum or whatever the material, which is basically metal, is deposited on this surface. This surf it doesn't stay only on the surface. After dry it, when it is taken out of the chamber, when this gets cooler, the metal is also stays inside this particular coating. So the coating is not on the surface, also immersed inside the glass. So if we scratch or if we just etch on the top of the surface, it is going from the top of the surface, but the, the metal which is inside is not removed. So this is the reason there was no transmission through this particular frequency selective surface which we made using laser beams. The other way of doing it is to use the milling machines. However, the milling machine, the tools, they are so fragile. They are, the tools are not that hard to do etching on this glass. The glass is very, very hard. And especially after being hardened with the metal, it is even harder than an ordinary glass. So then how to do the modeling for an uh, energy saving glass, which is hard coat? It is very difficult and also it is very difficult to etch. So we found out another solution for this one, just to get this done and see that whether we can just look at the response. So just we created a complementary, the same thing, but on, a, an, on an ordinary glass. Now this is an ordinary glass, it has no coating. And we pasted an aluminum sheet on the top of this. And then by using the milling machine, we basically did the edge. This is not basically, uh, it's not an aperture type. It's, a, it's, it's like a metal type. It's like a band stop filter. We would just wanted to have a look that what will be the, it is, this is the band path, this is the band stop. The only thing is they are just opposite to each other. We just wanted to see how this will uh, behave. And when we did the test, we got the re desired results. So that means that because there is no coating here, now it is removed, all the aluminum has gone, and just this metal is here. So this is the reason that we are getting a very right type of result from this particular screen. So we came up to the conclusion that in the previous case, the metal was not removed properly. So we have to find a way to remove it. To have a further experimentation, we had another energy saving glass. Here is the energy saving glass. 
uh, and this is again the hard coat. It's the same material as this one. However, here we did not use any etching, uh, any way of etching using laser beams or the milling machine because the milling tool, as soon as it will come and strike it, because of the hardness, the tool will break out. So we cannot use the both techniques. So we used a manual technique and we found out a way. The way is to just get a tool. I will show you this one as a zoom as well. This is a tool which is just to cut the glass to the ordinary glass. So we got this tool and then we created a low pass FSS because still using this tool or creating any structure like a circular or a rectangular or any type cross double even to create any of the FSS uh, element on this was very difficult. So the best way which we could show is to create a low pass FSS which is just aperture in the straight lines. And then we created those uh, structures and uh, first we did the simulation in CST Micro Studio to see how much uh, transmission we can improve. So usually with this type of hard code we receive on average about 20 dB or more than 20 dB attenuation in the useful RF and microwave uh, signals which uh, range from 700 megahertz to 2.2 gigahertz. So we took a ruler like this and I thought that by putting this because these are just straight lines by just putting this. So initially we used a metal knife. We thought that if we can do the metal knife and try to not just to scrub but also cut the glass through, this did not work. So we come to the conclusion that this material cannot cut the coating and the glass. And also we were using a compass from um, one of the companies. This was the compass. Uh, initially we thought to design a circular FSS and we were thinking that if we put over here and do like this, but this particular material or metal was only scratching the surface, but it was not still cutting. So the best solution then we found out after doing some research online that there is one tool which cuts the glass, but this is only made or this is just made for an ordinary glass and the ordinary glass is far less hardened than this one. So in, for the ordinary glass, if you just put this tool here and start scrubbing, after five or six times we just do this at the scrub, the glass can be, you know, tear apart, can be cut easily. But we found that even this scheme was not that easy or simple. However, we just uh, have to work a little bit harder and we created this type of uh, FSS, a low pass FSS. And uh, we found out that this tool actually cut through the glass, through the coating, went inside and removed even the glass from inside not like this one. And then when we put this under the test and try to compare the results, what we got in the simulation, so to our surprise and to our expectations, the results are matching our theoretical results, simulation results. So this is the way if we are doing research on energy saving glass, which is a hard coat one, and we want to fabricate, we have to use special tools to do this. We cannot do it with uh, milling or with laser. Or maybe if the milling tools, the, the tools, if they are only and only made for the sort of hard thing like this or glass or special tools, maybe it can work. So then the question is, what is the best solution to have an FSS on glass? Because by when we scratch it, the aesthetic of the glass is also gone. So if I put this in the window, this will not look good because because of the cutting of the glass there are you know this sort of we can see these lines because the glass is cut so the see-through effect is not good. So one way of doing it is probably through when the manufacturing the large-scale manufacturing when the glass is there uh, they can put one mask whatever the FSS we want we can create a mask and then insert on the top and then do the sputtering once the sputtering is done, we can take it out and then peel it off. So during the manufacturing process, the mass manufacturing, this will work.
then we do not have to do this sort of thing. Otherwise, unfortunately, the, the system or the method, method we have used, it has actually taken away the aesthetic of the glass, which will affect the see-through until or unless we are using in windows where we, these windows are just for the protection of the signals or the improvement of the, some of the signals within the building where this is not very important, then we can use it. Otherwise, this method cannot be used as commercial until or unless a commercial solution has been found to this one. But the basic of this video is that whenever we are doing a soft coat and we are trying to create an FSS in the soft coat, any of any method using either laser tech beams or by using milling machine that can be done but for the hard coat the metal is in, immersed inside the surface on the top surface rather than just staying on the on the on the on the surface here and for that one we have to do some deep cutting not just the one which i showed you in the in, in the beginning so this is the the main idea of this video to just explain to the researchers that if we are working on a hard coat energy saving glass, please bear in mind the points which I have made. And if we found or if I found our team found any other better solution for doing this one, we will come up with another video. Until the next video, goodbye.